In this recording, we're going to look at some special issues related to bonds. The first one we want to look at is what if the bonds aren't sold, you know, at the beginning of the year or on the contract date? So recall in example one, the bonds were issued at par uh, and they also were dated January 1. So in this illustration, we're going to look at, well, let's assume the bonds were issued on March 31st. So if the bonds were issued at March 31st, three months would have gone by, right? January, February, and March. Um, interest for those three months, remember the monthly, excuse me, the annual interest is $8,000. So 8,000 times three out of 12 months would have been $2,000. So what happens is then the bonds will sell at their, their sales price or issue price plus accrued interest. So the bonds would have sold for $2,000 accrued interest plus their selling price of $100,000. So the total issue price of the bonds or the total sales price would have been $102,000. So let's look at the journal entry and actually I see I have a mistake here. Uh, this should be March 31st for the first year. So on March 31, cash would have come in. That's the $102,000. And then we would credit bonds payable for face value. Now in the past, we would have put the $2,000 credit in as a premium, but the bonds didn't really sell at a premium. They really sold at $2,000 of accrued interest. And so what we're going to do here is uh, credit the interest expense account which is an odd thing to do, isn't it, when you think about it. So I'm going to set up interest expense, and we know that expenses go up with debits, so it's very odd that we would have a credit in that account. Okay, so here's the amortization schedule for the bonds. Uh, that has not changed from uh, our example number one. This is what we saw in the earlier recording. And there would be interest expense and cash paid throughout. Um, and so these would have been the journal entries. So let's look at in this first year, there would have been a debit to interest expense of $8,000. Okay. So when we post that, now we're going to end up at the end of the year with $6,000 in interest expense. And that's exactly what we would want for the first year, right? Because in the first year of the $8,000 of interest, we really would have incurred nine out of 12 months of that, which is $6,000. So interest expense should be $6,000. So we processed it by first, you know, recording the $2,000 issue price related to interest as a negative interest expense, and then just record interest as normal on the payment date, just like we normally would, uh, and we end up with the right amount of expense. So down here, again, recall we would have borrowed uh, $102,000 and uh, the issue price or the payback again is $140, right? That's $8,000 a year plus the $100,000 premium and so we would have interest expense of $38,000. And you know if I put in you know on uh, when the bonds were issued, we had a, when we recorded that, we put in negative interest expense. So I'm going to put that $2,000 in this column, and we'll see then that it will add up to $38,000, and we're in agreement there then. The second topic I want to address is the idea of bond issue costs, because there usually are some costs involved in getting the bonds out the door. So again, we're going to use example one where the bonds are sold at par. Uh, let's say the company spent $1,500 on printing, legal, and other promotional issues. So how do we account for those $1,500? Well, the authors of your textbook really went through this, uh, all the theory behind it. You know, we could record those as, ex as an expense. Uh, the authors actually s theoretically supported that. Uh, we could record it as a deferred charge, which is, in essence is an asset. And if we set it up as a deferred charge or an asset, uh, then we can amortize that over the life of the bond. Uh, we could set it up because we need a debit, right? Cash will be credited, so we could debit some sort of contra liability account. Uh, the FASB actually uh, supports this, but it's at a very lower level of authoritative 
status, so that's really not an option. Or we could reduce the bond liability, just net it against the bond liability and don't separately account for it. But anyhow, ultimately, uh, it's this number two option that is how most companies will record the bond uh, issue costs. So in addition to issuing the bond here, we also would have a journal entry when the bonds were issued, just debit some sort of asset account like bond issue costs for $1,500, and then cash would be credited as well. So notice I set up a, an, an additional column over here for bond issue costs. Uh, so at the very beginning, when the bonds were issued, would be $1,500. And so what will happen is we'll amortize this over the five years. So, you know, this is at 1, 1, X1 of the first year. And at every year end, we will amortize that. So let's see, $1,500 uh, over five years is going to be $300 a year. So we will want to have something like bond issue expense. Make some sort of journal entry, bond issue expense, and credit the asset account bond issue cost. each year in, so that'll be $300 a year. So after we post that at the end of the first year, right, so we have bond issue cost of $1,500 uh, that we started with. If we reduced it $300, now it's down to $1,200. And then, you know, we'll do that the second year, and now it will go down to $900. And then we make the same entry the third year, and it will go down to $600. And then keep going the fourth year, it'll go down uh, to $300. And then after the last entry on the fifth year, it will be down to zero. It'll all be gone. And then recall as well that last year, we zero out the bonds payable as well. And then the last topic is the extinguishment of debt. And this is actually retiring the bonds before their maturity date, before they actually mature. So let's look at, we're going to actually use example two where the bonds sold at a discount. What if we retired those bonds? What if we go out into the marketplace and buy them back for $99,500? What would be the journal entry? Um, and I want to just kind of talk about it in theory. I mean, we, you know, essentially we want to remove the carrying value of the bond. Uh, so get rid of it. Cash is going to go out, right? So we're going to give up cash in exchange for these bonds, the carrying value of the bonds, and the difference is either a gain or a loss. That should sort of sound a little bit familiar. Uh, same thing when we, if we sold property, plant, and equipment, right? We get rid of the book value or the property, plant, and equipment. Cash comes in instead of out, so cash comes in, or in, and the difference is a gain or loss. So the same thing here. We get rid of carrying value, you know, record the cash, and the difference is a gain or loss. So uh, let's go look at uh, our amortization table at the end of year three for the bonds. Okay, so here are our bonds sold at a discount. So at the end of year three, here's what we've got in the accounts. We have $100,000 of bonds payable, and then we have this discount of $899. So we're gonna remove these two accounts. Okay, so we wanna get, remove the carrying value. So we wanna reduce bonds payable. So reduce bonds payable. It had $100,000 in it, so debit that. We also want to reduce the discount. The discount's a debit balance, so we credit it to reduce it. Had a balance of $899. So there's step number one, remove carrying value. Step number two, record your cash payment. And that's $99,500. So now, you know, I really can just do debits and credit. Uh, I actually need a debit of $399 to balance. And that's going to be the loss on redemption of bonds. Okay, so again, we had a carrying value of $99,000. 101 and so I compare that carrying value with the cash given up uh, 
So I actually paid more cash than the carrying value, so we have a loss. And let's do the same thing. You know, instead of looking at example two, let's do the exact same thing in example three where the bonds were sold at a premium, and we're going to have the same price. So let's go look at it. This time, with the bonds sold at a premium at the end of the third year, we have a carrying value of 101771 and here are the balances in the bonds payable and the premium. So let's go back to our notes and we'll enter in uh, these dollar amounts in our journal entry. So again, we want to get rid of bonds payable. So we want to remove it of $100,000. We want to remove the premium. Premiums have a credit balance, so we have to debit the premium to remove it. 1,771. So that's part one. Step two, record the cash payment. 99,500. Oops, excuse me there. 99,500. And the difference is a gain or loss. So I have more debits and credits. I need a credit to balance 2,271. And we have a gain on redemption of bonds. Okay, so again, we're seeing in one illustration, we ended up with a loss, and the other one we had a gain. And it's just merely plug in the numbers and you'll be able to determine whether you have a gain or loss. Last one is what if, uh, in the same scenario on B, you know, here we have our carrying value, so what if we have this as, you know, the bonds payable and the premium, but in addition, we have bond issue costs of $600. Uh, then what would we do? Well, we'd have the same thing. We need to remove what's ever in the accounting records for the bond. So we would have to remove the bond premium, and again, that's $100,000. And likewise, we would remove the, pr uh, I said that wrong, sorry. We need to remove the bonds payable. Got ahead of myself there. Sorry about that. So bonds payable. We also have to remove the premium on bonds payable. So that would stay the same. So we, you know, assuming we still have those amounts in the accounts, but we also have this unamortized bond issue cost. Remember that would be a debit balance. So those bond issue costs are like a, it's a deferred charge. It's an asset. So we would have to credit those uh, unamortized bond issue costs to remove those. But you know, if they're on the accounting records, we got if we're retiring this these bonds, then we've got to remove that deferred charge that relates to the bonds. So anything related to the bonds that's in the accounting records, we want to remove it. So the bonds payable, the premium, and the bond issue costs. So all of those, all three of those now, really comprise carrying value. So all three of those net to the carrying value. Likewise, then we record the cash payment, the 99500 And then I add up my debits, add up my credits. The difference is 1671 and it's, I need a credit to balance. That would be the gain on redemption of the bonds. I'm just going to abbreviate that, but gain on redemption of bonds. Okay, so it doesn't matter what, you know, whether it's bonds payable premium, if it's also bond issue costs, we'd factor that in as well. Okay, so we're finished with that, uh, and we'll move on to other things in the next recording.